life is really very beautiful. It's not this ugly thing that we have made of it. And you can appreciate its richness, its depth, its extraordinary loveliness only when you revolt against everything, against organized religion, against tradition, against the present rotten society, so that you as a human being find out for yourself what is true. Not to imitate, but to discover. It's a tragedy, I think, that man lives in constant conflict with himself and with the world. This conflict expresses itself in so many different ways. The conflict between two human beings, the conflict between ideals, the conflict between two beliefs, the conflict between two gods and gurus. This constant conflict which man has lived in is very destructive. It is not creative at all, on the quite the contrary. It is a vestige of energy. And man apparently, you, have never been able to solve this problem at all. Conflict in relationship is really between two images. The image you have built about another and the image he has built about you. So in relationship, conflict is essentially between these two images. And can one live a life without this image? The image, the symbol, the conclusion that you may have drawn from your experience. And I think it is possible. Really it is possible to live without a single conflict. And that is possible only when you have no image about yourself. Image as being great or inferior or something noble or ignoble and so on. Not to have a single image about yourself or about another. Have you ever wondered why it is that as people grow older, they seem to lose all joy of life? Why do so many of us, as we grow into so-called maturity, become dull, insensitive to joy, to beauty, to the open skies and the marvelous earth? Thank you.
you can cultivate pleasure. You can pursue it. You can subtly, consciously or unconsciously, maintain this pursuit. But pleasure is entirely different from joy. You cannot invite joy. You, you may experience a period of joy and cultivate the memory of that experience and turn it into pleasure. But it's no longer joy. Joy cannot be invited as you can invite pleasure. And so, the memory of joy remains, and the cultivation of that memory gradually becomes pleasure and prevents the joy coming in. So one has to be very much aware of these two, that joy cannot possibly be invited at any time, consciously, or unconsciously. But pleasure in different forms can be pursued, sustained and nourished. So when this is very clear, the difference of the two, then joy becomes a natural event and it happens quite often when the whole principle of pleasure is understood. Yesterday evening, I saw a boat going up the river at full sail, driven by the west wind. It was a large boat, heavily laden with firewood for the town. The sun was setting, and this boat against the sky was astonishingly beautiful. The boatman was just guiding it. There was no effort but the wind was doing all the work. Similarly, if each one of us would understand the problem of struggle and conflict, then I think we would be able to live effortlessly, happily, with a smile on our face. Our life, our everyday life, is based on two principles, fear and pleasure, reward and punishment. From this arises this constant struggle. From this also arises the whole question of behavior. Because our 
behavior, that is conduct. How we treat others and treat ourselves, the manner of our speech, the act activities of our daily life are based on these two principles. And as long as these two principles, which is fear and pleasure, reward and punishment, there must be not only contradiction in ourselves and therefore in our actions, but also in our relationship with each other. And struggle and effort to become something, to achieve something. Psychologically, we are speaking, becomes one of our major problems of life. I don't know if you have noticed how every human being, right throughout the world, doesn't matter where you go, whether you go in the Far East, Near East, or in the West, man is caught in this web, in this trap of endless struggle. Struggle not only to live securely, physically, but also, psychologically, the battle that goes on within oneself, which is most destructive. I do not know if you have noticed this in yourself, how your life, your daily life, is based on this extraordinary principle of fear and pleasure, and therefore, one is trying to dominate the other, and from this arises this endless conflict. Is it possible to live a life without this constant battle, without this constant struggle, inwardly as well as outwardly? To really understand this, you have to see what your life is first. That it is a struggle, that it is terribly frustrating, painful. Be aware of that. Be conscious of it. Then don't escape from it. Don't run away from what you see. 